All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. It's good to see all of you here. Don't want to single out anyone, but we'll miss someone. It's good to see you all. I told my wife this morning I did not sleep at all last night. You know how you didn't, you don't sleep some. My goodness, it seemed like I was up all night long. Amen. The devil's a liar. Amen. He is already defeated. He knows that he is. He knows that he is. Beginning with verse 9, we're going to read down through verse number 19. And they say that when you read a lot, that means you're not going to preach long, and that is true. And if you read a lot, don't preach a lot. For the Apostle Paul writes to the Corinthian church, he says, For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Anoint thy servant in the ears of the hearers. Save somebody today. Save that young man, that young woman. Save that one who is on the fence. Bring back the backslider. Oh, Father God, we thank you for this day that has been singled out for your resurrection. Bless us in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. As you take your seat, look at someone that is near you and say to them, neighbor, these things you should know. Amen. Look at another neighbor and say to them, neighbor, these things you should know. Put your hands together again and give God praise. God bless you.
straight to our text. Because in verse 12, when Paul was writing to the church, now I know we got a lot of things going on today, and I know some of you got some places that you have to go to. Some of you have some times that you have to be at certain places. But I pray that just for the next 30 minutes, that we could be on one accord if everybody would just focus on the goodness of God if you for the next 30 minutes would focus just on how good God has been to you you're going to get where you're going if he allows you where you may be wanting to go if he does not allow you to get there, you won't get there. So for the next few moments, let's think of all the good things that the Lord has done for you. Verse 12, there is a problem, and it is a serious problem that is at that particular church. I understand that sometimes in churches, because you have people, there are differences. I thank God for this church, and I always say it. There may arise something every so often that we can't love one another about. Anytime you have people, you're going to have disagreements. But it's nothing that I have encountered in my years of passion. And I thank God that he has evidently blessed me because when I hear of some other things that go in some other places, it's mind-boggling to me. But what we're dealing with or what anybody is dealing with seems to be uh, uh, incomparable to what is going on in our text. He is writing to a people which some of them who were there have a problem and a disagreement and it is something that he has to take time out to address. And what he has to address is that some of the people that were in the church were saying that there is no resurrection of the dead. Understand this. He is not talking to people who are out on the street corner. He is not talking in a bar or at a game or just at work amongst friends. He is talking to people who are in the church. They have come up with this fantasy, this idea uh, in their hearts that there is no resurrection of the dead. Now, we have encountered some things here in the past, amen, where people have all kinds of excuses as to why they don't come to church. And those reasons, though invalid as they may be, are not on the level as if though there is no resurrection of the dead. Paul deals with this issue. And he lets them know that if there is no resurrection of the dead, then his preaching is in vain. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then our faith is in vain. If there be no resurrection of the dead, then, praise the Lord, our singing is in vain. Amen. And most importantly of all, 
amen, we are still living in our sins. Paul begins to talk to the church. He lets them to know, amen, that I am an apostle. I am a preacher of this gospel. He said, now I am the least of the apostles because of where I came from or what I used to do. I used to be a persecutor of the church. But he wants them to know that though he was a persecutor of the church before he got saved, that it is by grace that he is what he is today. It is by grace that we are saved through faith. All of us are here because of the grace of God. When you see John 3, 16, and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but that they should have everlasting life. That is a grace scripture. In other words, we didn't do anything, nor could we ever do anything in our lives to deserve this grace. Paul is letting the people who are saying there is no resurrection, he's letting them to know that he is there by grace. He's letting them to know that this grace was bestowed upon him and that he is a believer and a preacher, not only of this grace, but he is a preacher of the resurrection. Y'all still with me here for a little while? He said, now if you believe that there is no resurrection, then you also believe that Christ has not risen. Now understand, he uh, says to them that Christ has risen from the dead. He said he was seen at one time by over 500 people. He was seen of Peter, he was seen of James, and he was seen of the apostles. He has been seen since he has resurrected from the dead. The Bible says in the book of Acts, after many infallible proofs, amen. In other words, infallible is without a doubt. And for those who have been here the past couple of weeks, I guess you're saying he can't get past that word. But it is without a doubt. It is, amen, 100% sure that after he died that horrific death on Calvary's cross, after that they had put nails in his hand, nails in his feet, and pierced him in the side, after they had plucked his beard and spat up on him and beat him all night long, some of you may have seen the movie The Passion of Christ. I've come by to tell you it does not do what happened to Jesus any justice at all. The Bible said in the book of Isaiah as he prophesied some 700 years prior to that he was marred or beaten or unrecognizable more than any man. He was in a bad shape. He said he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He died a terrible death, but he died that you and I today might be saved. Praise the Lord. He came to redeem us from sin. 
He came to purchase us back and put us back on the right track. The track that God had intended for his most prized possession, which was mankind. That we might serve him and lift up our hands and be thankful. Lift up our voices and clap our hands and acknowledge that it is in him that we move live and have our being. He died. Oh yes, he died. But the question in our text is that some were saying there's no resurrection, but Paul says Jesus did rise. We've got concrete proof that he's alive. He lets them to know that not only was he seen of all the 500 and the 12 and different individuals at different times, uh, but he goes a little further and says, I seen him also. Amen. What better witness than an eyewitness? Paul on his way to persecute Amen. Some Christians, as what he already has admitted to, was on his way and he was knocked down off of his horse. Being knocked down, he seen a light and he heard a voice. And he heard the voice and he said, who is it, Lord? The voice spoke to him and said, it is I, Jesus and it is hard for you to kick against the pricks. In other words, Jesus was saying to him, I've been dealing with your heart. Even though you have been persecuting the church, you have been tossing people in prison, you have been arresting people and treating them bad. You stood at the head of Stephen while they stoned him to death. But I still been dealing with you. I still been talking to you. And you know how it is when some people, they may be in a terrible shape today. You may ride past them and see them. They may be dirty and dangy. Amen. They may be out on the street, been drunk, been high, and don't know what else they may have been. But God can deal with whomsoever that he wants to deal with. Because some people can be clean and be in a Lamborghini. God can deal with them too. They can be clean and in a Lamborghini and be miserable on the inside. So it doesn't make any difference, the Apostle Paul is trying to let us to know. No matter what you are involved in, it is not too hard for God to deal with your soul. I wish I was in the right house today. God has dealt with us on numerous occasions. For while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Amen. While you may have believed how beautiful or handsome or how clean and dressed that you were, it took a dying Savior, amen, to save your soul. We are all in need of a savior today. Doesn't make any difference who you are. Doesn't make any difference where you work. Doesn't make any difference how much money you have. You need a savior. Amen. And a savior is available for you today. You don't have to wait for tomorrow. You don't have to wait till next week. Even now. If he is dealing with your heart, amen, it is time for you to be saved. Amen. Because tomorrow is not promised to you. Bible says, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. He goes on to say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. 
Now, I don't know who God is dealing with in here today. I don't know who's God, whose heart that he is touching. Amen. But I believe that God is moving upon somebody. Amen. And if you decide to not today, amen, I don't know what you're waiting for. But don't stop coming. Look at somebody and say, don't stop coming. Amen. Because God knows how to bring you in. He knows how to gather you. Can I move on just a little bit further? The Bible then lets us know Paul, after addressing this, 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 this ludicrous idea uh, in the church that there is no resurrection. He said, I'm a false witness. And today, I'm a false witness also if uh, you say there's no resurrection because I preached that he rose. Amen. And if he did not rise, then I'll die a false witness. I praise the Lord. I, I, I know that he rose. Amen. There is no doubt about it in my mind. Amen. Praise the Lord. I say, how can you be so sure that he rose? Because dead people can't talk. Amen. Dead people can't talk. And he talks to me. Amen. I wish I had a witness in here today. Amen. And he, he, he walks with me along the narrow way. Amen. And even he sometimes talks to you. You may not know who it is. When you're getting ready to do something, amen, praise the Lord. And it says, don't do that. When you're getting ready to pass a car, I feel my preaching coming on, but it ain't time yet. When you're getting ready to pass a car and you're going 90 miles an hour. And they said, don't pass that car. Amen. Somebody talking to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you was getting ready to go over that house, amen, the Lord said, don't you go over there. Amen. If you go over there, it's going to be some trouble. And you didn't go and you found out the next day that there was trouble. Lord has kept us from many dangers, seen and unseen. Paul said, if he has not risen, then I am a false prophet. Yea, there are many false prophets. If the dead be not risen, then Christ is not risen. But I'm glad today to know that he rose. The Bible speaks to us in the Old Testament that he rose. Amen. I, Isaiah spoke to us about his resurrection. Jonah is a type of his resurrection. And not only do they talk about him rising from the dead, even Abraham and Isaac is a type of his resurrection because Abraham traveled for three days. And the Bible says on the third day, he looked and seen the mountain. Amen. So he was going to take his son's life, but in the mind of Abraham, Isaac was already dead because he knew that he was getting ready to sacrifice him. And so he speaks to us years prior, not only that there would be a resurrection, but he gave the specific time Three days. Uh, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Paul in verse 4 of this same particular chapter and says, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It is found in Psalms chapter 16 and verse 10. David the prophet writes, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither Wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption? We know that David is not speaking of himself because David did see corruption. His body did go to the grave. Amen. And he was buried. He did not rise. He was speaking of a future event and of a future man. 
Amen. And it is this man that we talk about today whose name is Jesus. Christianity, the central theme of our salvation is the fact that Jesus rose. Yes, he died and yes, he was buried. But if he did not rise, amen, our preaching is in vain. Uh, he got up to show us that one of these days we will get up also. Oh, there is a great reckoning day coming, my brothers and sisters. Uh, there is a reckoning day coming. Uh, and I want to be on that reckoning day. I want to rise with my Savior. You can believe it or you cannot believe it. But the day is coming and it's coming sooner than you believe it. The Bible says he's coming as a thief in a night. We must prepare ourselves and prepare ourselves now to see our Savior. I want to know if everyone in here today believes that he rose. If you believe that he rose, let me see you put your hands together and somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Oh, he rose today. If he did not rise, praise the Lord. Uh, if there is no resurrection, Paul says, then if we have hope in this life only, give me five more minutes. He said, if all that we have is hope in this life, that when we live and when we die, everything is over. He said, if we have hope in this life, we are all men most miserable. In other words, we're miserable because there is no other place that we're going to but back to the dust from whence we came. But I got a greater hope than going back to the dust. Uh, I, I, I got a hope, I don't know about you, I feel like preaching now, but I got a hope that one of these days, I'm gonna walk streets of gold. I got a hope in one of these days, amen, I'm gonna see Jesus. I got a hope in one of these days, amen, there'll be no more crying. Oh, you ain't gonna help me now. Oh, I cry sometimes. Life has made me cry. But one of these days, I got to hope I'm not going to cry anymore. There'll be no more pain in this shoulder. No more pain in this back. I got hope. Give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, I got hope. Yes, I do. I've been saved because he rose. They say living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins away. But rising, I'm justified. Freely, forever. Glory, hallelujah. Say yes, say yes, I'm saved. Now they said salvation is deliverance from destruction. Uh-huh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, salvation is deliverance from destruction, which means that I'm indestructible. Give your neighbor a high five. And I'm closing now. But say, neighbor, I'm indestructible. In other words, trials may come, heartaches may roll, but I'm going to make it somehow. I'm going to hang in. Weeping may endure, but joy is coming in the morning. He got up. 
with all power say yes yes I'm indestructible yes I'm fireproof yes I'm gonna make it yes through hard trial through tribulation I'm gonna make it yes well I gotta get ready to get out of here but I'm so glad that God raised up this Jesus with all power in his hand he's coming back he's coming back look at somebody and say he's coming back he's coming back he's coming for me yes he is is he coming for you shake your neighbor real hard like you gonna shake it all the way off say he's coming back for me and I'm glad, glad, so glad. Now clap your hands and give God. Yes! He got up. He got up. He got up. These things you ought to know. You ought to know that he rose. You ought to know he's got all power. These things you ought to know he's able to do exceeding, abundant, above. What, what a, what a situation the Apostle Paul must have been in. You mean y'all don't believe in the resurrection? And y'all been coming to church? You don't believe that nobody getting up? You don't believe that Jesus got up? Jesus rose. You believe George Washington was a president, but you wasn't here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad that I know now George Washington George Washington ain't never spoke in my spirit. He ain't never said nothing to me about nothing. But Jesus, Jesus, he's alive. He's alive. He talked to me. Yes, he did. He's alive. I'm no hero. Yes! Lift up your voice. Say, excuse me, neighbor, but I got a holler. Yes! Yes! He rose! Yes! Can't nobody do me like this. He got a rise. He loves me. He keeps me. He got to be alive. All right. After all you've been through, after all you've been through, you 
don't serve no dead savior. Ain't no dead savior brought you through what you've been through. You done cried and you done threw in the towel. You done gave up. You didn't quit. But guess what? You were saved and you didn't know that you were indestructible because you were saved from destruction. He takes me through. He picked me up. I was walking along the seashore and I only seen two set of footprints. I said, Lord, why'd you leave me? He said, I didn't leave you. I, I picked you up. I picked you up. Is there anybody here that he picked up and carried you? Say yes. He picked me up and carried me. Clap your hands. I'm quick. Leave here today knowing that Jesus rose. He rose. Power of God, hell, death couldn't hold him down. It couldn't hold him. And it can't hold his people. It can't hold his people. I'm glad about that today. If you're here today, if you're here today, today is the day that you make an intelligent decision that you come to Christ. Nothing else matters. But Jesus, this life is but a vapor. It's as the flower of the field, as the grass, it soon withers away. We're all going to stand before him. All of us. And you're going to be judged accordingly as you have lived. And I'm sorry to be the bearer of what some may consider bad news, but because you are here today, the Bible says, thou art inexcusable, O oh man. You've heard enough gospel today to save your soul. You've heard enough. That Jesus rose, he's coming back, and he's available today to give you eternal life. Everyone's on your feet right now. We thank God for all of you that are here. Thank God for you that are here. Is there anyone today that wants to give their life to Christ? Why don't you come? Repent of your sins. Be baptized in water in the name of our Lord Jesus and he promises to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Whoever you are, 